What is up, investors, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show. I am your host, Everything Crypto, here to bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, as always, please remember that nothing on this channel is financial advice. These videos are for viewer education and entertainment purposes only, so please invest responsibly, and I love and appreciate you all. And on that note, it is time to sit back, relax, grab that Friday morning cup of joe, and enjoy the show, as we have got tons of interesting stuff to get through today, including some proof that Ethereum is not truly decentralized celsius paying off its loan as well as some very interesting spice that has just come out regarding ftx alameda capital and voyager as well as shiba inu actually making some moves by dropping their own potential stable coin in the future so for starters here before we talk about all the madness let's just take a look at bitcoin here which has had a nice pump in the past 24 hours and i believe we're up something like 15 percent on the past five days uh from this like twenty thousand level all all the way up to 21,750 at the time of this recording. So yes, we have had a very nice pump in the overall markets. ETH is now sitting up in the mid 1200 range. So definitely looking a lot better than we were a couple of days ago. However, you guys know that one thing we have been warning about is the break above this 200 weekly moving average. And for Bitcoin, that is sitting right at 22.3K. So I said that I'm not taking any move seriously on Bitcoin until we are above that moving average and you can see here that we've actually had a very hard time breaking it since we have been below it we've actually now spent about two weeks below that moving average which has not really happened if we look at bitcoin in the past year you're going to see that we have wicked below the 200 week moving average but never really spent that much time below it this time is a little different now taking a look at ethereum it paints a little bit of a different picture because it is actually above its 200 week moving average uh, it looks like it's going to come back and test it real soon as a level of support so bitcoin and eth are sort of in opposite situations right now where bitcoin is above its 2018 all-time high which was 20,000, but below the 200 week moving average and eth is below its 2018 all-time high but above its 200 week moving average so very weird duality here between the two and i would expect that we're probably just going to shuffle sideways or remain somewhat bearish until we've actually figured this out until both of them can break above that 200 week moving average now we also finally got our hands on the script from the fomc meeting minutes and really it was a whole bunch of fluff like always but this one sentence here really caught my attention it is basically that many participants judged a significant risk and now facing the committee was that elevated inflation could become entrenched if the public began to question the resolve of the committee to adjust the stance on policy so basically what they're saying here is that a big risk to the market would actually be the market participants not believing the fed anymore not having faith in the fed to fight inflation which basically means that the fed is going to be more aggressive with their rate hikes in the future at least that's what it sounds like to me i think that we are already in a technical recession and at this point it doesn't really make any more sense for the fed to try and cover it up or hide things so they need to be more aggressive to finally just fight that inflation and bring it down as the damage is already being done now taking a look at Robinhood here which is finally allowed crypto transfers for all listed crypto assets on Robinhood so now when you buy your crypto on Robinhood you are no longer buying a proxy version that you cannot do anything with you can actually go ahead and purchase crypto on Robinhood and send it to your cold storage wallet they also said here that they do not charge for transfers so it sounds to me like you're going to get very cheap withdrawals on your crypto into cold storage this is definitely a very big move from Robinhood in my opinion and does actually let me see it as more of a legitimate crypto app and i believe they did also recently list uh some more coins like Chainlink, like matic so definitely like to see Robinhood beefing up their crypto roster we could start to see some new retail investors get in there now jp morgan here has also lost three executives to crypto firms this week this is a perfect example of the old world order being replaced by the new world order and we've been saying it for a while that bitcoin that crypto is inevitable eventually people who are more forward-looking thinkers may actually begin to leave the traditional finance system and ways of thinking and actually begin to move into the blockchain space 
which is just honestly a whole new world. So I think it's really funny to see that JP Morgan is losing a bunch of their executives to up and coming crypto firms. Now, we have been talking on this channel for a while about how these banks, these hedge funds and institutions are getting their slimy hands all over Ethereum. Ethereum was the fan favorite amongst the big players in the last bull run. And it is pretty much the worst kept secret in crypto at this point that ETH is very centralized, okay? However, because it is centralized, that does not mean that we cannot make money off of it. And ideally, while I do want decentralization to thrive, and I think it is the best for the individual, the matter of fact is, is now that these big players are so heavy into Ethereum that it is just as manipulated and centralized. But that is why we call it the chosen one because it is one that the big players want to succeed and therefore it will. So we don't have to agree with it, but we are here to make money from it. However, today we did see an article that really just shed some light on how deep this infrastructure does go how deep in these big hedge funds and institutions are into ethereum as it was disclosed that jp morgan owns critical ethereum infrastructure now basically there is actually a lawsuit going on here where 35 shareholders of consensus ag have come together to request a special audit of a deal that resulted in jp morgan chase acquiring an influential stake in two of ethereum's flagship products so what is Consensus? Consensus is a software development company that was founded by Joseph Lubin, who was actually a co-founder of Ethereum. The company is a major player in the crypto space, valued at over $4.4 billion, and they actually created MetaMask, the most popular Web3 Ethereum wallet. And a product that this company is probably a little bit less well-known for is Infura. However, Infura is still incredibly important to Ethereum, as it basically is one of the node networks that process is about 13 billion code requests every day so essentially jp morgan took a 10 percent stake in csi which actually does own the property rights to both metamask and infura for offsetting a 39 million dollar loan to joseph lubin the initial ceo so essentially they are stating that this was done illegally but more so the why this matters besides the fact that jp morgan is doing under the table deals which we all knew was happening anyways behind the scenes this actually brings to light many failures of the ethereum blockchain in terms of decentralization as metamask and infura are arguably the most critical infrastructure to the blockchain ecosystem and currently csi is the single provider that operates infura which is dependent on amazon's cloud servers making ethereum vulnerable to a single point of failure now that jp morgan owns a significant stake of this infrastructure they basically own ethereum now jp morgan's move to get a slice of eth is a reflection of the desire by many financial institutions to get into the crypto space because as we have been saying on this channel for a while this is the future and these big players absolutely know that as well however this could be very counterproductive for ETH as it does contradict the whole philosophy behind the establishment of digital currencies and decentralization as major infrastructure that is critical for ETH is in the hands of a single entity now absolutely this is not good in terms of decentralization but once again with this centralization does come the pro that these big players want their hands all over ETH and what they want to succeed most likely will. It is sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy when you have big players with this much money funding an ecosystem. But definitely interesting to keep in mind that JP Morgan does own very critical infrastructure when it comes to ETH. Now talking about some centralized exchange news as there is plenty of stuff to cover on this front. We first have Celsius actually fully having paid off their loan to MakerDAO. So we discussed in previous videos how Celsius had actually lowered their liquidation price on Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Actually, when this all started, their liquidation price was like 18000 then they actually reduced it to 12,000. Then they reduced it to 4,900 the other day. And then in the same day, they dropped it down to like 2,600 or 2,700, which I thought was very safe. Like I don't see Bitcoin going below 3K. However, Celsius did go ahead today and fully repay their loan to MakerDAO. And once that was done, MakerDAO did return to them 21,962 wrapped Bitcoins, which is equivalent to about 448 mil at the time that these funds were returned to Celsius. So this is increasing confidence in people that Celsius is actually righting their wrongs and getting ready to pay off their loans and to actually pay back their customers to once again activate withdrawals. However, the only thing that I am a little bit worried about here, and I'm just erring on the side of caution, is how is Celsius getting this money to pay off the loan if they did not have that money in the first place? It does lead me to believe there is a slight chance that they could be actually using their users' funds that they have locked in their accounts 
to actually pay off this loan because otherwise I don't see why they wouldn't have done it in the first place. So really, this is a question of, you know, how are they doing this? Are they doing this to pay back their users or are they using their users funds to actually pay back their loan? And that is something that I will be keeping you guys updated in the coming weeks. Now, we also got to talk about Voyager here. Speaking of centralized exchanges halting their users funds as there was some very, very interesting news that came out today. It was leaked in a Bloomberg article. And what this chart here is showing you is the amount of money that Voyager had loaned out to other crypto firms. Now, here is the big one that did honestly just cause the total implosion of Voyager, in my opinion, which is the 654.2 mil that they loaned out to 3 Arrows Capital before 3AC did file for bankruptcy. However, what is more interesting to me is the one above this, the 700, the, sorry, the 376.8 million dollar loan to Alameda Research Limited. Why is this relevant? Well, Alameda Research here is actually owned by Sam Bankman freed the owner of ftx and you can basically see here that cz breaks it all down in this tweet saying so three arrows capital owes voyager 650 mil went bust ftx slash alameda gives three arrows capital 100 mil but didn't save it alameda invests in voyager then takes a 377 million loan from voyager okay then voyager went bust ftx did not bail them out or return their money hard to follow so basically what he's saying is that alameda research here took out a loan from voyager voyager went bankrupt and instead of paying back this loan sam bankman free decided to use his other crypto platform ftx to try and bail out voyager instead of just paying back the loan that he already has existing with in another company so a whole ton of corruption here a whole bunch of money just shuffling around basically sam bankman freed could have bailed out voyager or helped them by giving them back this 376.8 million dollar loan but instead he would rather let voyager go bankrupt so he can potentially acquire it for cheaper through ftx now sam bankman freed is someone we have been saying we are keeping our eyes on close as he has been making a ton of moves buying a bunch of crypto companies on this dip on these mass liquid and this is not a guy that I personally trust to be honest he's already been caught doing some pretty shady things in the crypto space some pump and dump schemes and it definitely seems like he is trying to take full advantage of what is going on right now so definitely very interesting and I will be keeping you all updated on the situation with Voyager now moving on into Shiba Inu here this is not a project that we talk about often because you guys know that we do not talk about memes we talk about serious utility projects here however Shiba Inu is trying Trying to move away from being simply a meme coin and actually trying to bring some value and some utility to sheep holders so we got shitoshi over here dropping some serious alpha on what is to come with shiba inu and there are really three big updates the first one here is shibarium their layer two solution that has been in the works for quite some time now it is expected to go live in q3 of 2022 and it will use bone as its gas fee to empower microtransactions so bone will power shibarium the same way that matic powers the polygon layer 2 solution they're also trying to make their own stable coin called she and uh, i don't know if i would trust shiba inu with a stable coin especially after what has happened but they are trying to make their own stable coin which will be massive if it is successful and the developers have been quietly designing a brand new reward token called treat and the reason this is a stealth move is because they wanted to create a rather well-defined and outlined use case for the token and they did not want to rush another token into the space so basically the developers have decided to roll out treat which would entail a limited supply Treat's use case would not be limited to Shibarium alone. It would also be employed in the metaverse as well as the Shiba collectible card game. That is right. Shiba Inu is making moves into the metaverse and they have now just announced a card game that will be going live. Something like a Hearthstone or something like that, which for those of you who don't know is like a very popular online card game. And those do tend to have very loyal customer bases. So once again, Sheep is building its community, but actually through some utility this time and not just through straight memes. But can they deliver? That will be the serious question. Now we got to take a look at Ave here, who is trying to introduce yet another collateral backed stablecoin, GHO, pegged to USD. So GHO could be launched on Ave protocol, which, by the way, is like the number one crypto lending platform on Ethereum, fully decentralized. And basically, GHO would allow users to mint against their supplied collaterals. 
I don't know if I trust this. Once again, they're saying it would be backed by a diversified set of crypto assets. I just don't understand the need of these decentralized exchanges, of these decentralized uh, protocols to go ahead and introduce their own collateral backed stable coins. I feel like we've already just been through the ringer here so many times with these stable coins, and clearly the only two that have worked are USDT and USDC, the only ones that are not collateral, algorithmically pegged stable coins, the ones that just rely on having a one-to-one -one backed treasury. So honestly, I would definitely approach this with caution. Aave is definitely a very complex and developed platform, and they really want this stable coin to offer decentralization over collateralization to buy assets that continue to earn yield. It should be backed by multiple types of collateral available on the Aave protocol and governed by the Aave community, but that can all go to dust real quick, especially if this thing does lose peg, and that's just once again why I'm not a fan of these stable coins. Now we see here the Blockworks tweeted the UK to introduce legislation on stable coins by August. And I basically have this in my Twitter here, uh, quant and XRP with the eyes emoji. Let me go ahead and ship that out because, oh, it's not going to let me ship it out. Yeah, well, because this is going to be absolutely massive for quant and XRP. Okay. We've already discussed on the channel how XRP and quant both have ties to the digital pound foundation. Okay. It doesn't want to send my tweet out, whatever. Um, we've talked about how they both have ties to the digital pound foundation and they will be working very very tightly with the UK on their upcoming CBDC. So this will fare very well for Quant and XRP who are working tight with regulators in the UK. And for the last piece of news here, we see that Hashport has added DAI, Link, USDT, USDC, wrapped Bitcoin, and Aave on Hashport this week. And Hashport basically allows for the cross-network transfer of digital assets, meaning that now all of these assets that you see here will be available on the Hashgraph. It will be available on the Hedera network and that is just getting Hedera one step closer to really getting that mass adoption by getting all of these key coins onto the hash graph that is absolutely massive in my opinion and I cannot wait to see the coins that are added in the future so Hashboard is definitely a project that I am keeping an eye on as they are going to actually really accelerate the popularity of the hash graph in my opinion with this bridge now the only thing is is bridges have been susceptible to hack so I hope they can keep it secure but if they are able to do it and create a product that people trust to bridge their assets over, that just means a ton more DeFi and total value locked applications for Hedera. So I hope you guys did enjoy the content in this video. I will catch you all in the next one. Plenty of news to get through, so I'm going to get right back to work for you guys. Peace out for now.